I'd like to show you the usage of the minimum bounding box add-on. It's a simple add-on. You can obtain it from GitHub here. I'll also post a thread on the Blender Artist forum. Just download the zip, then you can unpack it into your add-ons directory, or you can use the Blender install from zip feature. Right. So what it does is if you have an object that came from scanned data or somehow is no longer oriented such that kind of the natural axes of the object match its local coordinates. Um, what my add-on does is calculates the minimum bounding box, approximate minimum bounding box, um, through one of a couple ways. Um, so the first way is it just kind of randomly samples a bunch of directions, calculates the bounding box at each one, picks the smallest one and gives it back to you. So it's kind of a rough rotating calipers. And the brute force method is the most predictable, but also the slowest. I mean, at least it's the most predictable within the ones available in this add-on. So if you're interested in how it did, you can come over and check the console. It'll tell you that it started out with a volume of 5300 or you know, whatever it is, how long it took and what the final volume was. And because this is random, you can see I've run this several times before. Um, 18,000 iterations got us to 869. <clears throat> 90,000, unfortunately, got us only to 882. And 1800 again got us to 883. So um, it really is you know, just a random sampling of directions. Um, if you want to visualize the directions that were sampled, check the visualize sample box. And let me take this down a lot so it runs faster here. Okay, and you can see it did a, an okay job, even with that smaller sample size. But here are the directions that it sampled from, added in a little bound samples object. And then at each of those directions, it will rotate the box around it in 90 steps. So um, this would be equivalent to one degree steps since the, the bounding box is measuring from two directions at, at one time. All right. So the other method you can use is um, the PCA methods, which are principal component analysis. And for that, um, you won't visualize the sample because it finds its initial set of directions from some matrix math and then rotates around one of those directions that it finds. Um, so only the direction sample and the visualize boxes features will work for that. And I'm not going to do the visualize boxes because it would make 90 boxes around this object. All right, so the these are faster, but they're a little less predictable because you don't know which axis is the best choice to spin around. So I'm going to guess. I think I've did, done this one before. And no. Okay, so you can see that it gave a fairly poor result for the X direction. This is distracting. Okay, and so it did an all right job there. So 878.13 seconds versus, you know, so it's a it's a a good deal faster. Um, but if you have to run it three times to figure out which one is the best orientation, then it may just be better to use brute force. So there's Suzanne. Oh, and what I wanted to show is that um, it does not alter the local transform of the object, but um, the
the bounding box that's created has local coordinates that are still axis aligned. So you can then copy the transform over that object if you need to. And that's about it. Enjoy.